Hello, I'm Don Walker. Welcome to News in Depth, where we try to take a closer look at the news and issues you need to know about in Brevard County. On today's show, we'll look at efforts to bring vitality to a major thoroughfare in Rockledge. We'll visit with our education team to talk about what's going on in Brevard Public Schools. You'll get an up-close look at a golf course that just recently opened to public play after years of being exclusively available to the military. We'll meet one of the few people who've worked at Kennedy Space Center and then gone on to become an astronaut. And we'll help you get your pool ready in case a tropical storm comes this way. Before that though, we want to focus on the hot button topic of the summer, health care. For more than a month now, legislators and others have faced confused, frustrated, and sometimes angry people in town hall meetings about President Barack Obama's push to overhaul a troubled system. Last week in Brevard, there was a town hall meeting held by the American Association of Retired Persons and a telephone town hall led by Congressman Suzanne Cosmas. Our cameras were there for the standing room only event in Melbourne last week. Let's take a look at the highlights. AARP has been working on health reform uh, much longer than in this current debate, uh, going back years. Our founder, uh, Ethel Percy Andrus, frankly started 50 years ago. AARP turned 50 last year. Um, and she did this in response to the fact that she had uh, retired educator colleagues who were living in poverty. In fact, she had a good friend who she found in California living in a chicken coop. And she decided that someone needed to advocate for older Americans. And so that really is our history. So I think you can see my sentiments. And I have the Cadillac of health care. I also have TRICARE for life. I want universal health care for every oh, person God. in <laughs> present your position on health care reform, please do. But today, the AARP is here to tell you uh, their perspective on health care reform. Please stop shouting during the questions. And you people that are asking questions, please keep them a little briefer. Thank you. Why wouldn't AARP please insist the government fix Medicare, Medicaid, yes. and Social Security yeah, first right. before small businesses, but just in the last 12 months I've had three very unusual circumstances occur, and I'm wondering if the present legislation can help in any way. I, I noticed there are two legislators here, Mr. Workman and is this, no, nope. Mr. Workman. Am I correct that your health insurance that we all pay for totals almost $18,000 a year per legislator in the state of Florida? I'm on the same plan as everybody. Yeah, I believe it's eighteen thousand dollars a year. Their health insurance. I've got employees part time that I'm concerned about. The debate continues in congressional districts across the country. President Obama and Democrat leaders in Congress say they intend to pass some kind of reform plan this year. Now to the schoolhouse. Our education team has been working hard to keep up with the busy first month of school at the public schools and now local colleges. Megan Downs and Michelle Spitzer are here now to talk about all of that, plus some of the tips to help your kids avoid swine flu. Hi, I'm Megan Downs. And I'm Michelle Spitzer. And welcome to another edition of Cram Session on the Air, 
your source for education news in Brevard County. Seems there's been some rumors circulating that a lot of students are missing school due to the H1N1 virus, better known as swine flu. However, school and health officials say that's not the case. Officials with the Brevard County Health Department say they will investigate a school further if 10% of the students are out due to an illness. That hasn't happened yet. A spokeswoman with the school district says attendance at all public schools has been normal this year. I spoke with Satellite High Principal Mark Elliott last week and he says he's heard rumors half the school's football players are out due to swine flu. Truth is, five out of about 100 players missed school and practice. All were back last week. Principal Elliott says the football team is at full speed and ready to win some games. Over at Brevard Community College, faculty members have a new three-year contract. A majority of the 227 faculty members approved the new contract late last week. Although there will be no raises, at least for the first year, it does give faculty more flexibility during their non-instructional time. Administrators and faculty members say this is a sign of trust on both sides. Tonight is the school board meeting. There, board officials will vote on the strategic plan, a plan that sets priorities for the district. Some of the bigger goals include making sure Brevard's graduation rate will be one of the top three in the state by 2013. Also by 2013, 70% of Brevard's middle school students will participate in algebra by the end of eighth grade. Another ambitious goal includes making sure that 80% of teachers have a master's degree or are nationally board certified by 2020. The board also will likely approve a plan to bring the Rachel's Challenge program to Westside Elementary School in Palm Bay. Rachel's Challenge is a program named after one of the students killed in the Columbine Massacre in Littleton, Colorado. The program teaches tolerance and acceptance of diversity. Rachel's Challenge came to some high schools last year, but this would be the first elementary school in the district to participate. You can find live updates from tonight's meeting on our website. That's at floridatoday.com education. Also this week, we should find out if the district is recommending the approval of a new charter school, Somerset Academy. Somerset was one of three charter schools to apply for district sponsorship this year, but it was the only school proposal that received an interview from the district's charter review team. The school hopes to be in Palm Bay and serve as many as 900 students in grades kindergarten through eighth, starting with the 2010-11 school year. If the Charter Review Committee accepts Somerset's proposal, the Brevard County School Board must then approve the five-year contract. Coming up in Florida Today, you'll also find my story on the district's AVID program. AVID is a program that takes middle-of-the-road students and helps them create good study habits and take advanced courses. The hope is to push grade-level students to become high achievers and realize that college is a possibility. District-wide, more than 700 students are in the program. We visited Kennedy Middle School last week to take a look at the program. All right, one, two, three. Who else wants to share? Bailey? Good job. Theo. Oh. <laughs> what, what do we not know about Theo? <laughs> AVID is a program to help uh, middle-of-the-road kids, kids that often fall between the cracks, uh, be successful. And we do that by putting them in advanced classes at Kennedy and then providing them support in the way of tutors as well as guidance so that we make sure they stay on track. They do have to fill out an application. They have to have uh, two teacher recommendations. We look at their FCAT scores, we look at their GPAs, uh, and then I actually interview every kid that applies. I started when she came to my school and she was like telling all these nice things about Abbott, like how the tutors came in and how it helps you when you go on these field trips. And me and my friends, they were like, yeah, this sounds really cool. Um, I think we should get involved in it. So then that's how I started. You go to colleges, and like, I think that really helps you when you go to colleges to see how it is. And most, the thing that I really like about when we went to the colleges is the good food and stuff like that. When we went there, I didn't know it was like so fun. Like, you get to pick your own classes, and you get to have like this whole fun fest there. Katie, you got straight A's in third grade? Katie, when, when's the next time we're going to get straight A's? <laughs> Let me ask that question again, Katie. Katie, when is the next time we're going to get straight A's? 
The correct answer is in eight weeks, Miss Hall. In eight weeks, Miss Hall. I've definitely seen an increase in the GPA. Um, FCAT scores and learning gains uh, also were phenomenal last year. Uh, the biggest thing, though, is their self-esteem and their confidence, and I believe that's the immeasurable part. Um, because once they leave me, they need to believe in themselves, whether I'm standing behind them or not. You can get the latest news from inside area schools in our cram session blog on floridatoday.com. Next up, Barton Boulevard in Rockledge is a growing business corridor. The area is shaping up to become a sort of main street through the Rockledge area, but local government and business leaders say more needs to be done. We went there to get a look at the progress so far. Barton Boulevard obviously is our central corridor um, for business. Uh, I don't think there was uh, any one thing that spurred these businesses to come here other than we're trying to improve Barton Boulevard as a location that people will want to come to. Attractive, uh, we have good services. The whole theory is get one nice place in this shopping center and then hopefully other businesses will come in and follow suit and then the whole shopping center will stay busy so that each business can feed off of each other's customer base. We've got to identify niche businesses for our area that will help us to uh, provide better services for the people that live in the area so that they won't go to Vieira, they won't go to Merritt Island for services that can be provided in Rockledge. One of our strategies that we are working on is we are working on some new signage that will be at Barton and Fisk. Uh, part of this will be to allow our retailers to do some joint events where they, we will provide the advertising for them and it could be sidewalk sales, it could be something in conjunction with our farmer's market, which is on Barton Boulevard, um, creating new opportunities for new events uh, that will allow them to showcase what they have. From Rockledge, we go north to the Kennedy Space Center. It's not often that an engineer who worked on the space shuttles here in Brevard County gets a chance to later ride one of them to orbit. In fact, it's happened only three times. Nicole Stodd is one of the three KSC astronauts and she's getting her chance to ride on Discovery's trip to the International Space Station. Let's listen to her talk about her upcoming adventure. Well, honestly, I think my, my initial and probably the kind of the grounding motivation that I have is uh, growing up with a father who loved to fly small airplanes, built small airplanes in our garage and at the airport while we were growing up. And so I spent a lot of time hanging out at the local airport with him and flying with people that were there and you know a little small cub and in his aerobatic airplanes and it was just um, I think that was kind of the initial thing it was there I I developed a passion for flying from you know what I saw in him and the passion that he had for it and I think the one thing that he expressed to me too was that you know you need to pay attention to the things that you enjoy and um, and those things can be part of what you do for a living and so that led me down the path of studying aeronautical engineering, uh, which then took me to a job um, at Kennedy Space Center, which was the number one place I applied for and, you know, really wanted to be there after growing up in Florida and seeing, you know, shuttles launch while I was at university. And, um, you know, got a job at Kennedy Space Center in shuttle operations. I mean, what cooler place could you be working? It's been a really nice evolution, this, this kind of moving through the NASA jobs and shuttle operations, working here at Johnson Space Center in aircraft ops as a flight engineer on the shuttle training aircraft, and then moving into the astronaut office with this, one day there might be this really great perk of flying in space. I, I mean, it really, like I said, you know, up until the point of, of starting work at, at Kennedy Space Center with NASA, um, it never crossed my mind that you know that being an astronaut was a possibility and you know once I started working there and meeting the people that worked there and um, you know seeing astronauts come through and seeing what they did you know when they were there you know working with the hardware or getting their um, their colleagues ready to fly um, it you know it became more real to me I think 
um, and this will happen while I'm on, still on the space shuttle, but I think that, that those first views back at our planet are just going to be just so impressive. And then the ability then to be living and working for three to four months on the space station and have the opportunity every day to just keep looking back at that, I think is just going to be really amazing. And, you know, that kind of expands the opportunity to be able to share it with my friends and family at home. And as well as the science and stuff that's going to be going on station, sharing that and what's what's happening on board station with them, and then you know with anybody else who's willing to listen about it, and I think it'll be really really fun. I'm totally prepared. You know, we all come into this in the expedition training with the expectation that it could be on on par or on order of six months, and um, three to four months seems seems just right. I think uh, my family will be okay with that, and I'll be okay with being away from them for that amount of time. The golf course at the Patrick Air Force Base is getting a makeover thanks to a small army of volunteers. The course recently opened to the public after years of being the exclusive realm of members of the military. We went to the base to get a closer look at what's happening at Manatee Cove where a bunch of people stepped up to help trim, edge, and plant thousands of seedlings. We have a big volunteer day that um culminated with the efforts of about 50 to 60 volunteers and, and some employees who came out to plant some 18,000 Florida native grasses and to reshape our current bunkers that we have on the golf course. There's a mix of military, uh, civilian, military retirees, and there's even a spattering of our new civilian guests who now have access to the golf course. So we opened up June 1st with the application process and on June 3rd, they started streaming, streaming into our fax machine. We received over 500 applications so far, and to date, we've received over 500 rounds of new golfers coming out to try our golf course. I just wanted to be a part of the community and help out here. I really love the golf course, and the people out here have been really nice to me, and it, it's just a lot of fun to get in there and do some hard work with the other people that have the same goal in, in mind. We've gotten a lot done, plant, planting some uh, grasses and some spoil areas, and it's a lot of hard work, but it's, it's going to be rewarding when it's all done at the end. I've only played a few times, uh, just started playing again after a, a couple of years of, of layoff, but yeah, it's, it's really nice. They've put a lot of time and, and money into it. The greens are really great, and the course is in great shape. It's a lot of fun. I really love the course. It's, uh, it's a local close to my house, and I was glad to hear that they opened it up to civilian use because it's, uh, it's a beautiful place. In the first two months that civilians got clearance to play Manatee Cove, they teed up for 1,240 rounds. That boosted play on the course by 18%. Last but not least, hurricanes are likely back on everyone's minds this week. This month, we've seen the first three tropical storms of the season crop up. We've been bringing you how-to videos every week to try to get you, your family, and your home ready in case a storm comes our way. Today, we've got some tips for preparing your swimming pool. Take a look. Pool preparation should be done well before a storm's winds start to pick up. First, remove all loose items from the surrounding area. Next, add extra chlorine to help with storm-related impurities. Finally, turn off the pump. It is advised to not put your lawn furniture in the pool because it could damage the finish. Also, do not drain the water out of your pool. A change in pressure could cause an empty pool to pop out of the ground or crack the foundation and tiles. You can find a whole list of those videos on our Storm Season website at floridatoday.com. That's our show for this week, everyone. We'll be back next week and every Tuesday. We'll show you more about the stories and people of the Space Coast, and we'll take you to new places that you might be reading about in the news. For Today in Brevard, I'm Don Walker. See you next week.